Welcome to the first episode of Tech Top Tens. Today's episode, Top 10 Satellite Hacks. Number 10, the Captain Midnight Incident. On April 27th of 1986, a young business owner by the name of John McDougal overpowered the transmission signal of the pay channel HBO, allowing him to gain access to the Galaxy One satellite, which broadcast HBO within the United States. McDougal used his access to display a message in protest of HBO's decision to scramble their channel. This forced customers not only to pay a steep monthly fee, but purchase descrambling hardware as well. This in turn caused McDougal's own business to dwindle. The message simply read, Good evening HBO from Captain Midnight. Twelve ninety five a month? No way. Showtime movie channel beware. Someone with access to a large satellite transmission dish, probably in or near the contiguous United States, but untraceable in so large an area, had simply aimed at the appropriate satellite and using HBO's published frequency, transmitted with more power than HBO, which overrode and replaced the HBO signal. Number nine, the Max Headroom incident. What if you were watching TV after a long day at work and suddenly found yourself watching a man in a Max Headroom mask being spanked by a fly swatter? Well, that's unfortunately exactly what residents of Chicago, Illinois found when an unknown pirate operator broke into WGN-TV's broadcast signal on November 22nd of 1987. To this day, investigators have been unable to identify the individuals responsible, and it seems as if they may never be caught. Number 8. Brazil Hacks U.S. Military Satellites What if you lived in a country that had little access to telecommunications, but easy access to radio communications equipment? You could do what many in Brazil have done, hijack a U.S. military satellite. Organized crime, truck drivers, and even ordinary citizens have been illegally accessing U.S. military satellites for more than 11 years using modified amateur radio equipment. Accessing these satellites is incredibly easy as they were developed with tactical communications in mind, thus allowing U.S. soldiers the ability to easily uplink the using small antennas and low-powered radios uh, so they could easily fit these within their man packs. While Brazil and the United States have prosecuted many individuals for accessing these satellites, activity remains on them to this day. Number 7. Satellite Feed Hunting While this may not be considered a hack to everyone, the United States government certainly takes issue with feed hunting. This may be due to the fact that the U.S. military has been using common DVB satellites that were originally intended to carry television channels as a means to relay their feeds from their Predator drones. On December 17th of 2009, CNN reported that Iraqi insurgents were accessing the feeds of their Predator drones. Unfortunately, this is a lot easier than one would suspect, as the feeds are not encrypted, and anyone with a satellite dish, as well as the proper computer hardware and software, can easily access these feeds by scanning the downlink frequencies of various satellites. It is also worth noting that this method has been used to find hidden video feeds containing everything from private events and military operations to live feeds of news reporters. And watching these can sometimes be humorous, as most reporters have no idea they're actually live at all times in the field. ...of this coup sinks in here on Capitol Hill. Congressman Edwards is calling for an immediate investigation to discover why the U.S. intelligence... U.S. intelligence... Okay. Number 6, DVB Satellite Interception Since the late 1990s, piracy has become the new trend, but with lawsuits and copyright holders becoming more aggressive over the years, many have turned to the likes of Tor and other services to hide their actions. 
There exists, however, a piece of software known as SkyGrabber that, provided you have the proper hardware, will allow you to view the downstream traffic of satellite internet users in real time. By filtering out the type of content you're looking for, SkyGrabber will identify and download content based on its name or file type. And because it's a passive system, there's no way to identify who's downloading this content. Unfortunately, one caveat of this system is that you have no way of requesting content to download and are required to simply listen to satellite traffic in hopes that a legitimate user is downloading what you're looking for. Number 5. VSAT Hijacking Similar to the previous hack that allowed the user to download information from internet-enabled satellites, this group has added to his research by actively seeking out the subscriber information on the satellite's downlink, allowing him to spoof a connection and masquerade as a valid satellite subscriber. This allows him to access satellite-based internet services free of charge. And due to the large area that the satellite covers, he is in theory untraceable, which you will see demonstrated in a similar hack later in this video. Number 4. Iridium Pager Hacking The Iridium service is fed by a constellation of 66 low-Earth satellites that are constantly moving. Together, they provide global communication coverage, and in 2014, a group in Germany released tools they developed to allow anyone to intercept and decode pager messages from the satellite network. This now allows anyone with cheap software-defined radio to intercept these messages, potentially exposing not only private but confidential information. If this wasn't bad enough, Iridium at the time allowed anyone to send messages free of charge as long as you had knowledge of an Iridium number, which you can easily find by listening to the decoded traffic in your area. With this, you could easily message, uh, send messages to anyone, anywhere in the world, free of charge, as long as the people you wish to communicate with have access to similar decoding software and receiving hardware. While Iridium has addressed the issue of sending free messages so easily, they are currently unable to prevent anyone from intercepting and decoding messages on their network due to the high cost of replacing the physical software burned into the chips of each Iridium satellite. Number 3. China accesses NASA satellites. In 2007, two satellites operated by NASA in the United States, known as Landsat 7 and Terra EOS, were hijacked by unknown operators believed to be located within the borders of China. The total access time was believed to be about 11 minutes in length. However, while these operators had access to the satellites, they chose not to issue any commands, and it's currently unknown why they were accessed in the first place, or if the Chinese government even had any involvement. What I found most interesting about this story is that the report was removed by the USCC and I was only able to obtain the document by viewing a copy of the PDF available on the archiving website archive.org. Number 2. The RQ-170 Incident While this hack may not involve interacting directly with a GPS satellite, it has rightly earned its spot on this list. On December 4th of 2011, a United States drone developed by Lockheed Martin, the RQ-170, was attacked and brought down in Iran by means of a GPS spoofing attack. Because the drone is unmanned, it utilizes GPS to ensure that it was maintaining its target altitude and staying on its designated path. It is believed the insurgents in Iran reverse engineered the signals that would normally come from the GPS satellites in order to trick the drone into thinking it was higher than it should be, and thus causing the drone to slowly descend in altitude until insurgents were able to land the drone and obtain information that may have been contained within. Today's episode is sponsored by Audible.com, where you can find thousands of audiobooks on any topic of your choosing. Visit audibletrial.com slash techtop10s today for your free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. Cancel any time and keep that audiobook as a free gift. And finally, number one, the Turla Hacking Group. At this very moment, individuals likely residing within Russia are infecting the computers of satellite internet subscribers and using those computers to hide their command and control servers by relaying data over satellite transponders corresponding to the individual's hijacked accounts. The Turla Group has been active for more than eight years, stealing information from various governments, including the United States, China, Vietnam, and many others. Although the team at Kaspersky has identified how the Turla Group is hiding their service, they have been unable to apprehend those individuals as their te technique is by far the most advanced we've seen in any cyber espionage attack to date. Thank you for watching the first video on Tech Top 10s. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, like, subscribe. It really helps me out. Let me know what you're looking for and uh, tune in next Monday for a brand new video.